we're going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Absurdity Podcast with Doug and I, where we go over absurd hypotheticals, some communication stuff, some fitness stuff, maybe some other things that we don't even know about yet. Just stuff. Yeah. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about change, um, how you handle yourself in change, some different job stuff, because I've been doing some interviews. We've got some different topics that we would like to discuss today. So, without further ado, welcome to the podcast. Let's get started. For sure. Doug, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm a little anxious, but uh, that's because I have a lot of stuff I'm planning on doing over the next month. I'm planning on finding a new job. I already like, have a schedule that's being oriented for January, starting the 1st. Um, I sold a bunch of stocks today because I need money for my credit card bill. <laughs> Cause I let loose when it comes to Christmas, man. I've never like not paid my credit card bill in full. This is the first month where I'm just paying the minimum, and I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Doug are very opposite though when it comes to like Christmas stuff, like basically gift giving. I would say, yeah, because you like giving gifts and yeah. like buying people gifts and stuff. I don't like gifts. It's like, hey, I thought of you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Which like I appreciate it. But I don't want the gift. <laughs> I think I don't world, want the gift. I want you to tell me that you got me a gift and then just don't give it to me. I do that all the time. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I think in your world, when someone's like, hey, I was thinking about you, you want a phone call. You're yes, like, Let exactly. Me talk to you. Like if someone was like, hey, I was just thinking about you, I wanted to get you a present, return the present, <laughs> just don't buy it. I don't need the present. Just give me a call. Would you say you like the time investment that's more meaningful? Yeah, no, I'm definitely more of a quality time person or like a... I'm more of a quality time person when it comes to, like, how I want to be showed love, you know? Mm -hmm. But then, like, for giving it, I'm, I'm definitely more of a words of affirmation guy. Like, I'd rather tell you that you're doing well. I'd rather, like, hype you up, you know? But receiving, you want quality time. Yeah. I mean, uh, giving, I do quality time a little bit, too, but it's a little bit more verbal. Hmm. But I'm definitely not gifts at all. Don't like gifts. Well, based on that, you must hate me. <laughs> 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 the stuff you call me, I, I, I like call you on the phone I'm like hey what's up man he's like what do you want that's the that's the that's I'm, that's me sharing and caring with you oh that yeah. doesn't that's not what it feels like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it takes a little time to get used to do you have any um what's it called interviews lined up today no not today um so yesterday i had two interviews and then the day before i had two interviews so I don't know if everybody else is necessarily aware, but I'm planning on moving to Austin um, like February 1st-ish, first week of February-ish. And so it's been a lot because I've got different job stuff that I'm trying to figure out. So I have obviously money and you know something to occupy my time when I'm in Austin. Um, I also needed to find an apartment, which I'm kind of like on the tail end of right now. Like that one's that search isn't going as well as the job search is. Finding a place to live is kind of important. <laughs> well, the reason that the, the living thing hasn't been as big of a deal to me, though, is because I figure the apartments specifically are always changing price and they're always kind of available. So it doesn't really do me too much good to have the apartment set up two months early rather than one month early. Whereas the job, with the job, I'd rather have that a little more secured, especially because if I get the job and then I go to the apartment and say, hey, I just got this job, I'm gonna be moving here at the beginning of February, and this is my you know, recruitment letter, then that's gonna be a lot easier to get an apartment with than saying I'm unemployed and I would like an apartment. How is you know what like I'm what is the difference between like normal interviews and like getting jobs that you know you're already located in the area for versus like interviews with jobs that they're like, Hey, I'm going I'm not in your state, but I'm gonna move there in like a month. It's been interesting. How does that work? Well, how do they work that out with you? It's it's different for every business because it's it's where do I start here? So like if you're looking for a job locally, you could go into that business and be like, "Hey, I'm looking for a job, you know, this is what I offer to the table. Maybe mm -hmm. I should work here." You know what I mean? You could have that interaction though. Whereas since I'm moving to Austin to get the job, I've had to pretty much rely on like online indeed, things like that. Um, but once I started filling out job applications and you know, I probably filled out like 100 applications at least. Um, once I filled those applications out though, then I started getting some calls, setting up like little interviews or setting up little meetings on the phone or Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, but this one company that I'm looking at specifically that I really kind of like right now, um, their office is in Tampa too. So they've got like offices all over, but they've got one in Tampa. So I went in the other day to do an interview with them in person. Um, so like, 
I'm trying to explain this the best way I can, but it's kind of like all over. So I interviewed at the Tampa office for the Austin office. And okay. then I've got another interview with them on Friday. So, well, when you guys are seeing the video and tomorrow for us, um, I've got an interview again with them, like with the Austin people. So we're going to do like a Zoom interview in the office with the Austin people to come on board, if that makes sense. That's cool. So there's a lot of different ways that it's kind of happening. Like other companies, they were just like, yeah, let's just make a phone call. Like, you know, I'll send you an email if you get the job. So like some places were, you know, like really like minimal in terms of effort. Mm -hmm. um, some of them were a little bit more hands-on, like this one company that had me come into the office and I'm going in again. So it's like two drives to Tampa for this job, you know what I mean? Whereas other ones, I just sit at the desk and do them. So there's a lot of different variables, but um, it's been interesting. I really enjoy looking for jobs. I like looking at all the job descriptions and like reading all the different possibilities of like, you could do so much stuff for work. Like if anybody is looking for a job, if anybody is saying that they can't find a job for whatever reason. Come brush my teeth for me. <laughs> Five not, hours an hour. That's not what I was getting at. <laughs> I was telling Doug earlier that like, this is a joke, but once I make my first million, I don't want to have to like brush my teeth or like fix my hair. Shower yeah, like by I, myself. Yeah, like I want to be able to like just have someone do it for me. I'm pretty sure know. once you make your first 10 million, people will do 10 it 10 million you. maybe, yeah. This is an unrealistic goal because by the time that I get this much money, I'm gonna have my stuff figured out anyway, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna want someone to brush my teeth anymore. Yeah, you might not even have teeth. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have teeth. Trust me. Okay. These teeth aren't going away. Um, back on the interview thing, yeah. is there a difference between like the questions um, they ask you for like another location versus like normal interviews you've had in the past? And like, since like I know you were gonna go to Austin before COVID. Does it feel the same, or is this like a completely different like thing for you? Well, it's kind of a two-part question. Let me get to the first part. So the first part being like doing job interviews in Austin versus doing them, you know, like here. Mm -hmm. That's not too big of a problem. Like the questions are pretty much the same, I would say. What are some of the um, questions? Just like, I'll get into that actually in a minute. Okay. But um, basically the only difference was the relocation part. Like they're really... They really want to make sure, like, hey, are you relocating already? Um, do you need to relocate? Are we are we paying you to relocate? Um, mm -hmm. So the moving part, that's the only part that's been really unique, I think, to, to not getting a job locally. But that makes sense already, you know what I mean? Like, that was kind of expected. What do they prefer? I think that they would prefer you to be there. Obviously, right? You know what I mean? But, like, they... Everybody that I've talked to, all the jobs that I've been looking at, they've been pretty accommodating and they've all been like, yeah, if you're planning on moving here at the beginning of February, you know, do you want to start February 7th, February 10th? You know what I mean? So everyone's been pretty accommodating and honestly, the job market is way better than I thought it would be because I've looked for jobs in the past and stuff and I obviously haven't gone as in depth as I have on this job search, but I found so many jobs. I mean, so many great jobs, like all paying really well. Um, all the requirements were somewhat minimal. A lot of them didn't even require a degree. Um, a lot of them didn't even require experience. Like some of them I was looking at were just requiring like a year or two of restaurant experience for a sales position. What? But it's because it's about your personality. Okay. It's not like you don't need to be a college graduate to be able to sell something. If you've got the personality to do it, you're going to be able to succeed in that job. But um, it was just really interesting though for me because I thought that based on everybody else, the way that they talk and the way that everyone kind of narrates the job market it kind of sounded like it'd be a lot harder um and it's not i mean it was it's like it's been super easy for me to get jobs that like i feel nice <laughs> <laughs> dude i've had like probably almost 10 interviews this week that's a lot you know what i mean and those are interviews that, that i already went past the first step so it's been interesting like i really i've been really impressed with the process i thought it was going to be more bleak that's so, good stuff yeah no it is good um and what was the other question you were saying i don't know <laughs> but yeah, it's been interesting. It's been really what, interesting. What was that second question? Uh, you were asking me about questions in the interviews. Um, but no, no, there's a second part to the first. I like initially asked you two questions, and I asked you a question about the first question. Yeah, I don't remember what it was either now. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. It had to do with like change, though. Um, oh, this is the question. You were going to move to Austin before COVID, mm -hmm. but because of COVID, you stayed two more years. Correct. Um, is Call this, it a year and a half. Two years. Is this... <laughs> <laughs> you're literally leaving in like early February, and that's when you're originally going to leave. No, I was going to leave in May. Or, oh. I'm sorry, August. 
I was going to leave so in August. So a year and a half. Years. Okay. A year and a half. Um, four years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is this like preparation to move the same thing, or is it different? Vastly different. Why? <sighs> you're like you're moving. Like, All right. Where do I start here? <laughs> um, so when I was going to move originally, I was in college, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was graduating college, and so I was living in an apartment in Tampa by myself, and well, with roommate, mm -hmm. but. Um, it was, it was interesting because after I was done with school, I was planning on moving to Austin. I had kind of been setting up some jobs already um, that I had kind of networked with. So like this professor that I had in college, uh, me and him just got along really well. He was a sales guy as well. And then he recommended me to a couple different companies and stuff. And like we went out to lunch and, you know, he just kind of helped me with some different stuff. Were you telling me about that? Yeah. And it was a really cool experience and I was, you know, getting ready to get going. Um, so it was kind of lining up. And then I had also kind of looked at some apartment stuff and some different, you know, like places to live so I had kind of like began that search and started on it mm -hmm. but it never really got past like like let's say there's a handful of phases in order to actually be successful with it and get there mm -hmm. I really only got to like the first phase because when COVID happened I was like well I'm not gonna keep looking right now you know what I mean I'm I don't know what's going on with the world right now like what if there's not an apartment next week like I don't know like if there's not jobs next week right. so I was like I guess I'll just have to you know kind of hang out and then I was in my apartment in Tampa for a few months after COVID, and I was, like, expecting it to end, and I then I would it. go. But well, it didn't end. So I was like, I guess, like, I'll have to figure out a new plan now. So my whole, my entire plan just got flipped upside down. And then I moved back in with my parents, which wasn't very thrilled about at first. <laughs> because I was like, I really wanted to go to Austin, and I had my plan set up. But then it ended up being, like, real nice, because I enjoy seeing my family and, you know, getting to see my brother and... You know, have dinner with them and stuff. Like all that good stuff. Yeah, because at some point I'm not going to see him all the time, you know. So it's been nice, but um, now that I'm getting ready to go again, it's it's a lot more in-depth. And I'm a lot more prepared. Like, I feel like I've learned a lot in the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. Just going on that trip and, like, kind of doing all kinds of different things in the last year and a half. And so now my job search is a lot more plentiful, I would say. It's a lot more, like, like I'm really on it. Like, I'm actually, like, writing all this stuff out and doing the resume really in detail. I'm, like, you know what I mean, on the job looking for jobs like I'm, I'm on it you know what I mean yeah and then same thing with apartments I'm a lot more on it with the pricing and like with the locations like I've had a lot more time to research stuff over the last year and a half so I would say that my you know like process here is is a lot better what else is different though not too much so pretty much the same thing you're just more serious about the prep yeah I would say that's probably a good summary of it do you think like this like move that change in general is pretty much like the same every time it happens? Yes. So I've moved, I'm not going to count, but it's probably at least four or five times. Um, is it, still, it feels the same every time? Every time. Because hmm. and it's the same thing as getting a new job. And I'll tell you, because when you get a new job, what happens? How long does it take you to learn the job or like get comfortable in that, in, in that environment? Like you a know? few months maybe? A few months usually. But like I would say more or less it takes you two or three weeks to be like, I can be okay here. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. you're, you're okay. And then after like two or three months, then you learn everything and you're comfortable and you're confident with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I would say it's a very similar process when you're moving in. <coughs> like the last time I moved into an apartment by myself, I remember, uh, after, after a couple weeks, I had kind of remembered like how to, how the layout of the apartment was. So I could walk into the different rooms without having to like run into something, you know what I mean? <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm just saying like, it's the same thing. Anytime you're you're in a new environment, anytime there's a new set of circumstances like given to you, it seems like for me anyway, it takes a couple weeks to kind of get used to it and to like learn the basics, and then it takes me a couple months to kind of get, really get established. And it's the same thing I feel like with jobs or with moving to a new state. You know what I mean? It's all kind of the same. It, it might be grander on scale, but I think that the overall stuff is still the same. I wanted a better word than stuff, but. I heard someone explain this about, like, public school and, like, public education recently, how, like, the school work you do from, like, K through 12 gets harder, but it gets easier for you to do, and that transfers over into college. Like, the stuff you start learning is more critical, um, kind of harder to understand, but you get better at doing it, and it's kind of like it's the same assignments basically you're still doing quizzes you're still doing quests it's the same stuff you're just getting used to it over and over again yeah so is that like the same premise as like 
it's the same feeling. You're just getting used to like doing it since you've done it so much. Yes and no. Um, I think, see, I know what you're saying, but I kind of disagree with it a little bit. Why? Because I don't really think that, like my view on the school system is a little different. <laughs> but my, I guess I'm not going to get into it. My, my overarching point here is that with the school stuff, you're, you're taking tests and you're kind of being, you're being taught to like learn a certain way. So mm -hmm. it is getting a little easier, like you said, because you're learning how to do it. Okay. But with like moving or getting a new job or like any other thing, it's, it's different than school because mm -hmm. school gives you a structure and, and they like make you do things a certain way, which like, I'm not really a huge fan of because I think that everybody does things uniquely and like does it their own way anyway. And that when you allow people to do it that way, then they'll do their best stuff. So like, I think that's kind of more or less the premise of like moving a new, moving to a new place or getting a new job or whatever is you, you figure out how you fit into it. Not like, not like how you need to be in order to pass that test. So what you're not saying is everyone should spend a week in Silicon Valley. <laughs> I think if you, do that, if you haven't left home, you should leave home. I think if you haven't been on a vacation out of your state, you should go on a vacation out of your state. Vacations are just like a taste of it. Yeah. And if you if you say like, oh, I don't have any time, like Make take time. two days off work, take two days off school, like fail a quiz and go do something. You know what I mean? If you haven't done it before. If you say that you don't have any money, then like that means you're not working because if you were working, then you would have money. So if you're not working and you have nothing to do, then put your hiking shoes on and walk to another state because you've got plenty of time. There is, <laughs> there is an state. option. Like I'm telling you, it's it's so valuable to be able to see, like how other cities and how other states and how other people do things. It's like the fishbowl theory. It, exactly. You have to learn that there's other like tanks out there. Yes. The world's a lot bigger than you think. And everyone gets trapped in their little fishbowl. And like I do the same thing. I'm not saying I'm not guilty of it, but it is so dangerous because then, like you just get trapped, and then you think that's it. It's a scary thing to think about. I think a good way to walk through life, though, is to go explore the ocean and then find where you want to set up your fishbowl. Yeah, no, I would agree. Mm -hmm. And and that's a that's really good analogy. I really like that, actually, mm -hmm. because that's kind of like how I've been thinking about it was like, I've always liked to travel. I've always liked to see things and go places. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen a, a decent amount of places, you know what I mean? And, and been able to kind of make an informed decision about where I'd like to go and what I'd like to do a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not saying I know everything, but... I've got enough to kind of formulate my idea. And Austin is kind of my fishbowl. Like, I've, I've mm -hmm. been really drawn to that city for, like, three years now. And, um, you know, it's starting to finally, like, come to a conclusion. Though. Like, I got, like, another month and a half before I end up getting there. And so I'm, like, really excited to organize my coral. And I'm really excited to put my rocks down. And I'm really excited to, like, maybe meet a couple new fish, you oh. know? I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm excited to go, though. I'm excited to set up my fishbowl there. Is there any doubt in your mind that it's not exactly going to be all it's cracked up to be? Yes, and then that gets crushed immediately. Why? Because it's the same thing as when you get, like, nervous. Like, um, the other day I was going into my job interview. I think I actually told you this the other day, but I don't, I don't know if I did. Um, don't worry, I don't remember either. No, either way. <laughs> uh, when I was going into my job interview, though, like, as I was driving there, I was just about to get there, and I started getting a little nervous. And, you know, everybody gets that same type of feeling. Like, you get a little... Like, for me, I tend to notice I get warm. I yeah. start getting a little hot. And then when I start noticing that, though, then I'll be like, no, 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 stop. And so, like, I always, like, will verbally tell myself, like, stop or, like, stop being dumb, stop being dumb, like, don't be a retard, like, whatever you need to say to yourself. Like, just, like, I try to get myself into thinking that, like, what I'm feeling is not good, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then I'll kind of, like, reverse that nervousness a little bit. But I think it's the same type of thing because I do get nervous about moving. Like, I don't know anybody there. I don't know... If the job, I, mean, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy the job. I don't know if the apartment's going to be good. Like, I don't know if I'm going to, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. And there's like a little nervousness like associated with that. But why would I worry about it? I can't control it. You know what I mean? There's nothing I can do to change it that I'm not already doing. Mm -hmm. So I have to just like take a couple deep breaths and relax because there's no way to fix it. Like there's no, there's no problem is my point. There's, there's really no problem. It's self-made. Exactly. So if I just relax and just kind of go into the interview or go into the city with a relaxed mindset and like just the confidence of knowing that things are going to be okay, then everything will work out. Hopefully. They will. Fingers crossed. I have no doubt in my mind it'll work out. Because let's say the worst situation happens. Like Give me, give me your worst case scenario. Of you get off happen. the plane and you get shot. Bingo. Life's over. I had a good one. 
Mm. Easy. That was an easy solution. <laughs> what do you... Give me a better one. Give me you a better shot set of circumstances. You get your right leg and in your left shoulder. So you are now in a wheelchair, mm. paralyzed. That's unfortunate, but it does open up a broad array of options. Because, I'm a wheelchair salesman. <laughs> well, not only that. I mean, like, I, I mean, like I, I've always wanted to be part of the Olympics. I could be part of the Special Olympics. Um, That's not what that means. Yeah, huh? Yeah, I was like, wait a second. I was like, I've seen the Special Olympics. I love watching it. Special Olympics are for the people that are superb at what they do. Um, <laughs> That's not what that is. Well, like, I really like watching the basketball. I yes. love watching when they're rolling around and they're playing basketball. That really, like, gets me going. What really pisses me off about the Special Olympics is <laughs> <laughs> when they do play basketball, they hold it too much. Well, they can't, like... That's basketball, though. I know, I know what you're going to say. They can't dribble because they're paralyzed. But, like, that's the that's basketball. How are they going to steal it? I don't know. I mean, I love that, though. They're, I love watching They're it. not allowed to, like, reach over and, like, grab it from your lap. I don't know what the rules exactly are. I, I would like to look into it. But table tennis is another good one. The Special Olympics, they, they do fantastic yes. table tennis tournaments. Like, I love watching. I, I actually really enjoy watching the Special Olympics. <laughs> what but, other um, Special Olympics things piss me off? Um... Do they have going down a very like <laughs> <laughs> this is a very dangerous road, Doug. No, it's not. Do like, they, what do I not like about the? Do they have Olympics? um? Do they have um? What's the thing? Uh, curling. Do they have Special Olympics curling? Mm. I'm not sure. I'm certain that won't work out. Why? Because they would have to like rotate sideways and shuffle at the same time. I think you're underestimating their ability. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really think you are. I mean, if you you've seen it, right? Like they do incredible things. It's amazing watching what they can do with just their two arms or just like whatever, you know what I mean, whatever different. You're not selling me. Well, I, <laughs> you don't, have, don't watch it then. Watch the regular Olympics. <laughs> well, what pisses me off about the regular Olympics is like water polo. Water polo, like you, it's, first of all, super cool that they could tread water for like an hour. That's like <laughs> impossible. Like the Navy SEALs can do it for like three. So they're basically like on their way to be Navy SEALs. Um, but they also like swim with the ball in hand and I don't know like can they steal it when they're holding it I'm not sure I don't know the rules of water polo we don't know a lot of things <laughs> we don't, we, yeah we should make this clear we're pissed off about it <laughs> we we make a lot of assumptions and we tell a lot of stories we have a lot of ideas but in the end we're pretty eh, we're still ticked off inex <laughs> inexperienced I would oh, say you take it back don't non not knowledgeable we'll say any other descriptive adjectives? Jack of all trades. A jack of all trades? Yeah, Master yeah, that's a good none. one. Yeah, exactly, because we're like, we know a little bit about a lot of stuff, but we don't really know a lot of stuff about anything. If you were going to be a jack in a card deck, what suit would you be? If I was a jack in a card deck, I would be the jack of diamonds. Really? Yeah. I'd be the jack of clubs. I, would def I was debating between hearts and diamonds. I don't like the black cards. I like the red cards. I would say that my favorite card in the deck is a King of Hearts, but the Jack of Clubs specifically is, I don't know. See, like, like for that. me, I like the Jack, Queen, King, Ace, Diamonds. All Diamonds? All Diamonds. Why I Diamonds? Like this. Just because, like, money? Um, no, I like the Diamond because it's simple. Like, the Heart I like, but the Heart is, like, emotional. I'm not trying to be emotional when I'm playing cards. You <laughs> trying know? to be smart. And the Black ones I don't like because, like, they're not as, like, appealing to me. Like, the Red I really like. The Red reminds me of love and of, like, like hate or blood. Like, it's got a lot of powerful emotion associated with it. I like red. Have you ever seen, like, Lucifer on Netflix? Yeah. The black card, the the clubs especially, make me think of, like, Lucifer when he's in the club scene. <laughs> it's very, like, like posh, stoic, but, like, he's moving with a purpose. Hmm. Like, the clubs is kind of, like, a very, like... I don't know how other words to describe it. It's, like, a cool, mysterious, but, like, purposeful, like, stereotype. I don't know. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. It is kind of interesting, though, how everyone's interpretations of the different things, you know what I mean? Like, your, like, view of the cards, something like cards, is so different than I don't than know why that came to my head. Like, but it's interesting, because it's like, they're cards. They have, you know what I mean? No you intrinsical could, value. Exactly. And you interpret it way different than I do. Like, when I'm playing poker, if I see red ones, I'm, even though it's not the most probable thing, I like the red more. Like, if I'm playing roulette, I'd be a lot more likely to bet on red than I would be to bet on black. I'm the exact opposite, though. That's what I'm saying, hmm. which is funny. Is it because you're a Sigma? Sigma. Sigma male. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Got him. What are you? I'm an alpha. Beta. Oh. <laughs> 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 My dad actually said something 
about how it's better to be a Sigma male. And I Let's explain like, what we're talking about real quick. Well, just for can you explain to Sigma because you know more about no, that. You go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh. No, you. Why sure. don't you explain Alpha and Beta and then I'll explain Sigma. Um, just because so, everybody might not know. Be the easiest way to explain it is Alpha male is going to be like a, um, a powerful leader type and a Beta male is going to be a follower, someone who's um, willing to execute plans made by other people. And then a Sigma male is kind of like... I don't want to say an in-between. A Sigma is more or less like an independent. Like, like I, in another lane. Yeah, so... I don't want to use myself as an example, but I'm kind of a Sigma. Like Who's someone famous that's a Sigma? Maybe like Tony Stark. You know what I mean? That's a good one. Tony Stark, so a made-up character. Well, no, no, I'm giving an example though that everyone can relate to. Like Tony Stark, Iron Man. Like He's an independent person. Like He has his own kind of thing that he's doing. He might interact with other people. He might like give some demands or he might follow someone. But it's more or less like he's got his own kind of thing that he's doing. And that's that's kind of what the Sigma is. So like I'm kind of in a similar way. Like I like to do my own thing. I don't really like to be part of the group as much. You know the, what I mean? The way I see Sigmas is they have all the attributes of a leader, but no followers, and they don't lead. I would say you're right. I'd say that they 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 they're like leaders, but they don't want to lead. Like they want to do that. They want to lead themselves. Yes. But like the thing is, it's nice about it too is you can be either one a little bit. Like when we go out, I'm like again, I'm not saying that I am. But we trade dream. these roles though. Exactly, and. So, like, if we go out, though, sometimes I will lead and, like, take care of the group. You know what I mean? Like, say there's someone that's drunk and they need to get taken care of. Sometimes I will. Sometimes, though, I'll just follow. Like, if you're leading or someone else is, like, kind of leading everything, then I'm okay following, too. Like, I'm okay just kind of doing whatever, but I kind of like to be independent and kind of do my own thing. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Something I think a lot of, about a lot is how we, we lead the packs of people when we go out. I love that. No matter what happens. Like, one of us is in the front, one of us is in the back. It's interesting. One of us is directing, the other one is, like keeping everyone together yeah no it's funny because like every time we go out and do something that happens yeah so, what am i gonna do when you leave i don't know how am i gonna lead the pack There's if you no start crying on this podcast <sighs> yep dab them up <laughs> close your eyes <sighs> okay <laughs> doug's gonna doug's gonna be real upset here why because i'm leaving yeah bing bong <laughs> <laughs> No, but it, I think we're still going to try and do the podcast, too, when I leave, because, like, when I was gone on my road trip, I was gone for, like, three months, and me and Doug talked all the time. You know Almost I mean? every day. Yeah, we talked a lot. Like, I was just kind of, like, mentioned what I was up to and stuff. You tell me what you're up to a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it was, like, kind of nice, like, comforting having that, you know, sense of community a little bit. Like, I talked to my parents a little bit here and there, talked to my brother a little bit here and there, you know, and then we probably talked, like, at least a few times a week, I'd say. Yes. So, it, I, mean, I mean, I don't think that'll change too much, I'm saying. Like, when I leave, I think we'll probably still well, no, I, I don't want to hear from you ever again. Oh. Yeah. Well. I think the contract's up, actually. This might be the very last podcast we ever do, then. <laughs> this might just be the conclusion. Absurdity had a absurd run. <laughs> Absurdity final part. <laughs> oh. But I think it'd be fun to do, like, a Zoom version of this. Maybe. Maybe, he says... <laughs> Doug's not as enthusiastic about the idea of doing a long mm -hmm. distance podcast. <laughs> long distance always works, though. Who do you know in a long distance relationship that's not happy and successful? <laughs> Shade. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like long distance relationships. So what are we? I'm gonna ask the what are we question. That's right not now even comparable. We're friends. <laughs> it's not a. It's different. You said you're gonna zoom me once a week. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. When you guys come out and visit, I'll be back. I will be there for your birthday. We'll do yeah. something for your birthday. Anybody that's listening, by the way, that is interested, my you birthday is February 28th. February 28th. If anybody would like to buy a plane ticket and come visit me in Austin. My address is, oh wait, I don't I'm not going to give out the address yet because <laughs> I don't have it, like you said. Yes. But I would love it. I would love if everybody came out and uh, we had like a little party down on 6th Street. That'd be super fun. Dude, we've been talking about this for months. Like, I know. On your birthday, on I'm Sixth really Street. excited. I want everybody to come out. I'll be there. I'll get there one way or another. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you guys can all like get together and do like a like a, a jet. I don't know. Like maybe get a private plane. Just rent it. Like you split want it. A private, you want us to show up to your birthday in a private jet and you don't get any part of it. I don't need the private jet. So why would we get the private jet? Just for fun. Happy next birthday for us. <laughs> well, I mean, like, you need to get there somehow, so, like, how much more expensive would it be to rent the private jet? I think you're underestimating the price of a jet. I am. 
<laughs> I've never had to buy jet fuel before. Uh, let's not get into the jet fuel conversation, mm-hmm. though. <laughs> so how are you guys going to get out there? Helicopter? <laughs> you can carpool. I was thinking that yacht. A <laughs> yacht, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be fun, though, if everybody came out and visited. I don't know how many of you guys are actually planning on visiting. None. That'd be sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> anyway, though, back to some change a little bit. So obviously this is a big change. That's kind of what we wanted to talk about a little bit today was just like dealing with change and kind of how we handle ourselves with change and, you know, just kind of getting into that topic. So this was like a big thing, though, because obviously I'm going to be leaving and that's a pretty big change for me. And it's, you know, decent sized change for you, I guess, because you know, we hang out a lot. Mm-hmm. So tell me a little bit about your side of it. Like how if, if you're dealing with something that's you know what I mean, challenging, or if there's, like, a big change happening, and you kind of have to adapt, like, like what kind of happens for you? Because, you know, I, re- I kind of already explained what I do, like, with a job interview and stuff. So, whatever the change is, a big thing that um, you need to find a balance of is your preparation and thinking about what you're going to do, and about, your, like, your plans, and actually executing and doing things. Um, there's people that just do things they don't really think about what they're doing and those people wind up complacent and stay where they are and there's also people that just think about what they can do or could do but don't do anything yeah those people also are complacent and pretty much you know paranoid about what's going to happen i think we've fallen into both of those a little bit at but different you, points too. you have to to go through change you have to like plan out try a little bit of it depending on what happens you have to adapt to that and I would say the biggest thing for me personally that I struggle with is preparing for like failure. I mm. like when I do something, I like am laser focus on it. It's how I handle my problems. I just focus on the problem. I fix it. Get it done. Don't wait around. Don't think too much. But like make a plan, execute. The problem with that is you don't really think about the plan not working. You just like have a lot of faith and like trust in like yourself and what you do to make it work. So if like. I, I got a job opportunity recently where I'm um, talking to someone about a sales position and I can be like, oh, I'm going to leave my job, I'm going to try this one job, but I'm investing everything into one opportunity. Yeah. And even if I like focus all my energy into like making sure I have the best interview and I'm answering the best questions and I'm putting the best version of myself, there's still a chance that there might be like, yeah, no. There's a high chance. Right. So yeah. if I'm, I don't prepare for that failure ultimately i'm gonna lose either way yeah i guess i see what you're saying because like if you don't get it then you'd be upset and if you i see what you're saying that's the, that's the biggest thing i struggle with it's like i i how i handle change is it's a problem that needs to be fixed fix the problem immediately i don't like think i think i should think about change a little bit more mm. I don't exactly handle handle it well. Well, I don't, <laughs> like, never, I don't think anybody really does, though. I mean, like, even think about, like, leaders. Like, think about different presidents of the United States or, like, different, you know, political people. Like, they handle change in the, in the most horrific way I can, like, sometimes I'll see stuff they're doing and I'm just like, how are you doing that? Like, how are, how is this a good idea? You know what I mean? So, like, if, if there's people what that are, are doing, there's people running the country, though, that are not doing the right things, obviously, because it's human nature. So right. you can't beat yourself up too much is my point. Right. You're not going to be perfect. No, you're not. You're going to make bad decisions. It's just going to happen. It's funny how everyone, like, attacks each other for, like, not being perfect, though. Yo, that is Especially so when, true. when it comes to handling change. Yeah. Like, if you're, like, if something's changing and you're trying to adapt to it and it's not working out for you, people are going to let you know. Oh, yeah. They're going to be like, you're not doing good. Yeah. We don't like that. And, I don't know, you just kind of have to roll with the punches there. No, it's like what you just said, though. It's interesting because that's definitely how people are. And I think there's a reason, though, behind it because it seems like I've noticed when I'm doing things that people don't really care about, like if I'm, say I'm doing a little research project because I like to do a little research projects on my own. Well, when I tell people about that, if I say that I failed or something, most people don't really care. They don't even bat an eye because they're like, whatever, it doesn't appear, it doesn't do Appeal anything. Yeah, and they, they don't care about it, so they're not interested. But if I said, like, something along the lines of like making money or you know what I mean getting a girlfriend or something that people do care a lot about then I think the jealousy comes in a little bit like that that jealousy kind of feeling they want to be a part exactly and I don't think that people like seeing other people around them change for the better because then it kind of reminds them that well exactly I think it's that they see themselves as complacent Mm -hmm. and then when someone else is kind of changing or adapting to new things 
then it kind of like points out that they're not. But if it's something that they don't care about, like doing a research project, then they don't care. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I think it's a little bit of like holding your cards a little closer to the chest so that way everybody doesn't have the opportunity to jump on you and, until it's fully like formed. That's extremely hard though. It is really hard. You have to not... <coughs> I don't know. Like there's that's. I don't even have any advice for that. You just kind of got to... That's where the human part uh, comes in. I was talking to um, this girl about it um, yesterday morning. Um, if that does come up and you can't get there, your reaction is like not... It might come off as bad, but it's very valid. Yeah. It's because like, like... Well, what you feel is valid. It's... Like, you can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> um... You can help your reaction to a certain extent, but sometimes, like, it's human nature. Like, you're you're going to react badly. Yeah. Well, that was our very first podcast, kind of, was like... Podcast? Your, your, your podcast. Podcast. I've been getting a lot of northern people down, because I've been Ubering, and I've been getting oh, yeah, a lot of northern Uber people. people. No, no, no. I've been kind of adopting <laughs> their accent a little bit, because I like it. I like that Minnesota accent a lot. Minnesota. That Minnesota accent. Mm. Yeah. Um, what was I just saying? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, just being neutral. That's what I was saying is... Always neutral. Well, that's, it's such an important thing to keep in mind because no one's ever going to be able to be neutral all the time. Like, you're going to have biases and you're going to have... You're going to stray away. Exactly. But if you can think about it and, like, actively try to be neutral and try and, like, be, you know, somewhat relaxed and kind of just adapting to whatever's going on, mm -hmm. I think you'd be more or less better off. You know? Yeah. Finding your homeostasis. Yeah. And, like, I'm not saying I'm there either. I'm definitely not. But that's the goal. True. Yeah. It's easy to say things, you know? It's like, it's easy to talk about this stuff. It's easy to get like a situation or like a perspective and then like talk about it and figure out, you know, good or bad things or, or what you should or shouldn't do. But it's a lot harder to do in practice. You know what I mean? And, and like, I, I really pride myself on thinking about a lot of this stuff and trying to figure it out and try and find solutions and answers. But it's like, even if I do, I still can't always apply those things to my life because it's really difficult to, to actively... Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to explain this the right way, but even this, I can't explain it the right way. Well, whatever you know? it is, you have to, like, practice what you preach. You have to get your reps in. You well, that's what I'm saying, though. It's so hard to actually practice what you preach because you can know what to do. You know what I mean? But it still might not happen because your emotions and different things might... Or your environment, your circumstances might elicit a different response. Well, try it a hundred times. One, oh, oh, you're right. One of those times might work. Yeah, that's the only way. The, the experience is the only way. Experience is the greatest teacher. I was actually talking to John that was on the podcast last week about this. Johnny last Camp. Night. Um, we were talking about religion and the Bible and stuff and um, just how he's getting like closer to his religion again. And one thing I pointed out that I like, which is hilarious because I just lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? There was about? a little beep. I'm not sure. <laughs> Let me check this real quick. No, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Um, what was I just talking about? John getting closer with his religion. Experience. Um, yes. People like the philosophers um, of, like, Greece and just people have written books and memoirs in the last few centuries pass on the knowledge not of which they were taught, but of which they experienced. Yes. And the reason why is because I don't know if you ever heard the saying, I think it's like, believe none of what you hear, half of what you read, every, all of which you um, see. Is that, is that Socrates? Maybe. Um, basically, it's like things that you're told, I mean, it's a good peace of mind, something to think about, but there's no way to like prove that. There's no evidence. There's no evidence. When you read something, um, you can believe half of it because like, this is like coming from somewhere. This was printed for a reason. Like this, there was yeah. a, this piece of information had the ability to get to you like this for a reason and not told to you. Hasn't been like cut out at all yet. Right. So it's a little more valid. Gotcha. Um, all of what you see, because all of what you experience, like it's hard to like say like, hey, like I see that I'm, like I'm on like a nice fuzzy carpet right now. It's kind of hard to tell me that that carpet's not fuzzy, <laughs> or, more, or it's not a carpet because it's your experience. It's, it's, it's my experience. I was there. It happened. Yeah. Um, and like just bringing that into like lessons that we teach, like you can talk on a podcast, tell all these people like different ways to structure your life and like give you all a piece of advice. But until you experience something like what we're talking about or like you've been told, 
you're really not going to learn it to its full extent. Yeah. And there's no problem with not learning something that is like being told you that's supposed to help you. Um, it's just kind of like peace of mind, keep in the back of your head for when it happens. Yeah. So then you understand how to handle it. But even handling it, like we were just talking about, might not always work out to the best extent. So it's yeah. more of just like do your best. Well, I would, I would say like this type of stuff, like doing a podcast or, or watching YouTube stuff or things like that that are a little bit more like teachy or kind of more like you're just kind of explaining stuff or you're talking about stuff, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the way that I look at it anyway is I don't really look at it to be like, that's what I should do or I'm, I'm learning this thing that I can apply. I like to do it more of as a, a comparison or reflection type of thing. Like I really like to hear other people's perspectives and how they think and say things because then when the stuff does happen to me, say I react the same way, then it's kind of validated. You know what I mean? So if like something happens to someone else and then I hear them talking about it <coughs> and then that does happen to me in a similar type of circumstance, then I can be like, oh, like that's kind of normal. I guess like I felt the same type of thing that they did. Or if I didn't, then I can be like, oh, like maybe this is a skill of mine or maybe this is a weakness of mine. Like there's, that's kind of the way I see it. It's more like... It's peace of mind until you experience it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, this is an interesting conversation. <laughs> is there anything else that we wanted to talk about? Um, I like your socks. Oh. It's trippy, 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 trippy. They're pink and they've got melted, um, they're kind of hard to see. They're like melted smiley faces, though. I don't know though. if you should show your feet on YouTube. Is that like a... It's like age restricted. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put no kids on the <laughs> little thing. You, you can only watch this if you have no kids. You can have kids. You have to be a single parent. Okay, let's not let's not like corner our audience here. You can you can watch this absurdity podcast from any eight no 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 eighteen and up, sixteen and up we'll say to when any gender no any no, race no, no, no. any ethnicity to what any place in the world you to can use a age? smartphone. I am not telling this stuff to a ninety year old. Why not? Because they're gonna think I'm stupid. Well, that's fine. <laughs> no, it's not. They've been through life. They uh, they they know if so, you're being stupid. So they probably get a kick out of us being stupid. Because they were like, when I was 20, I was stupid. You know what I mean? Like they yeah, you like, are too. Yeah. Like, if I was old, like, when I see 10-year-olds and stuff, like, hanging out and doing dumb things, like, like if my brother has his younger friends and stuff over, mm -hmm. I get a kick out of it. Because I'm like, I remember doing that. I think that was fun. Like, I, I remember the the feeling of being, like, young and dumb. You know what I mean? So I'm sure <laughs> old people probably feel the same way. If you're, like, 90 and you're watching this podcast for whatever reason, I hope you enjoy it. Bring your grandparents. Yeah. And also, if you can figure out how to like click that little bell, it should be right down on the screen over there. Um, if you can figure out how to click that bell, click the subscribe button. It's mm -hmm. a red box. It says subscribe on it. Um, the like button, which is just a thumbs up. It's going to look just like this. You don't have to this. describe it. They know. Well, I, in case we have a 90-year-old viewer, I wanted them to be able to know what to do here. So, yeah, go ahead and do all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you next week with another episode of Absurd. Peace. Peace.